So let me do a quick introduction. Uh, I've been in the video game industry for over 30 years. I've made many, many games, uh, and I've worked on uh, titles uh, and created, directed uh, Blood Omen Legacy of Kane on the PlayStation 1, uh, Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem uh, with Nintendo uh, on the GameCube, uh, uh, Metal Gear Solid uh, also on the GameCube with Kojima-san, and uh, many, many more titles. Um, I uh, started Apocalypse in 2018, and I like to say I'm coming back from the dead, uh, working on Dead House Sonata, where you play the undead fighting the living in a narrative-driven uh, multiplayer action RPG. Um, I have a computer science background and uh, two computer science degrees, uh, master's in artificial intelligence, neural networks, user interface, and also uh, a comp sci degree. Uh, I also have a phys ed degree as well, but uh, I was in school too long maybe. And uh, uh, bottom line in, in the video game industry though, is that I'm known for telling stories. Uh, I've uh, All of the games that I'm known for have a very strong uh, narrative background. And you're gonna find that today's talk uh, is probably gonna vary really differently from a lot of the other talks where I, I hope to be somewhat provocative and at the same time, uh, make uh, everyone really uh, consider what it takes to get into the game industry and if it's, if it's right for you. So um, I've been in the industry and thinking about these questions for a long time and what does it like and how do you get into the industry are questions that I, 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 I'm often asked. And I really uh, think it's imperative that people think about what it means to make a video game and what's important in video games. You have uh, what we've seen today with all these backend infrastructures um, and these game mechanics leaderboards, these things are all important, but uh, there's a core aspect within video games that really makes people play them. And what are those things? And if you're gonna get into this industry, I think it's really important uh, to understand that. Um, there are many ways to get into the industry and my particular uh slant has always been examine the classics look at the medium and see what we can pull from that uh, when it comes to actually creating content in today's age um, if you do this uh, I think it'll give you a great advantage and it'll also tell you if this is what you want to do. So for today's talk of getting into the video game industry, I'm hopefully going to challenge uh, everyone uh, to really think about uh, what it really takes. And uh, I am a huge believer in um, the medium is the message and uh, Marshall McLuhan uh, really understood the media. And uh, from that perspective, uh, I think that it's imperative that we understand really what this means. And um, interestingly enough, when Marshall McLuhan uh, came out with this uh, incredible saying, you can see the book cover there, there was actually a typo where it said the medium is the massage. And uh, what, what really happened there was just a typo, but he felt that uh, that his message was so important. And that means what you're saying is less important than how you present it. And that the medium actually overpowers how, uh, how or what you're trying to say. And he felt that it was so important that people would still get the medium is the message beyond this typo and they'd remember it. And that uh, really, he refused to change it because he felt that that really supported his message. And we all know today the medium is the message is so, is important. So he was absolutely right. So even though the book title was called The Medium is the Massage, everyone knows that the medium is the message. And I think that's really important to understand. So when you're creating all these different things with your graphics and your stories and your gameplay, um, you need to understand that the medium that you're presenting in whether it be books, film, television, that how it's presented will overpower anything else because that is the message that, that you're creating. Super, super important. Um, and 
when you start thinking about video games, uh, the real uh, focal question is, well, what makes a good video game? And you'd be surprised to know, being in the video game industry for over 30 years, I know very few people who feel very confident that they know what the, what the answer to that is. Um, and I've made several, many, many games. And I think I have a way of creating them. And I think I have a theory. I know I have a theory and I think it's correct. And I will present that here to you today, but I'm forwarding it more as a hypothesis because no one really knows the answer to this question. Um, there's many plat like many platforms of like PlayStation and Xbox and mobile and PC. And there's many arguments over this. Does that really, if the medium is a message, how much does that come into play? There are many genres like we're making right now with Dead House Sonata, an action RPG, but there are, you know, fighting games and racing games and space simulation games. Um, what, what really differentiates things and what makes them important when you're trying to create a game? So uh, this is what I like to, um, I hope everyone's enjoying the visuals. They're all from Dead House Sonata, by the way. Uh, we're, uh, we're having a lot of fun uh, with Dead House. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go into a lot of theory here, and I, I hope that people get something out of it. Um, so I always like to think about uh, when when thinking about creating a game. Well, what is the most important factor? And if you're gonna break uh, if you're gonna break games down into their rudimentary or foundational points, what are these areas? Well, I, I break them down in the following areas: uh, audio, visual technology, story, and gameplay. And I, what I like to do is do a scientific analysis or quasi-scientific analysis to see what is the most important factor. And if we can find, and if we say something like, well, audio is obviously the most important factor because of X. If we can find something that says, well, no, that's not the case, um, then we can rule that out. And so uh, please bear with me as we go through this quick exercise. I hope you'll find it interesting. So there are a lot of a lot of games, a lot of audio games, and uh, there are many, many people throughout the history of the games industry that would say audio is the most important factor in making video games, and we're going to make these games. Parappa the uh, Rapper, Parappa the Rapper is a really good example. Rock Band, another really good example, where audio uh, really brought these games to life, and uh, they were very, very successful. And so the question would be, can we find a game where absolutely audio is meaningless? And I think you could say, yes, almost all games. Uh, now we're in the pandemic and we're not, uh, we're not uh, seeing a lot of people on mass, mass transit yet, but they will return. You see people playing mobile games with sound off all the time uh, where the audio is not even used and they're still having a lot of fun with the games that they're doing. So it's not saying that audio is not important, but it does say that you can play these games without audio. So it's definite and still have fun and still be uh, really interested in the game. So I'm going to say on, on this particular aspect, we found a circumstance where audio is not the most important factor. Many, many people think visuals are absolutely the most important factor. Uh, and if your game looks fantastic, uh, that will mean players will really, really love it. With Dead House Sonata, uh, we're very big believers in visuals. And you can see by uh, my background where uh, we have uh, uh, an illustration of the concept art of uh, the vampire going from you know concept to realization. Uh, here you can see in this particular visual, a very realistic, gritty looking uh, you know, shooter where uh, everything looks fantastic. So can we find games where graphics uh, uh, are not, that are very popular and graphics are not important? Well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's many, many of these. So by this argument, uh, one could say uh, pretty, uh, uh, you know, pretty uh, uh, constructively that uh, graphics are not the most important aspect because you can have a fantastic video game, uh, frankly, without uh, 
without any graphics or without graphics that would be considered state of the art, as you can see here by Minecraft, but there are many other examples of this. Technology, many people think that technology is ev everything. And if you look at different engines, the technology uh, behind them, uh, particularly when I first started talking about these things in 1993 at the uh, uh, at GDC, the, the game uh, development conference, uh, everyone thought at the time back then that uh, the engine and the technology could really take you far. And if you look at Doom here, which is a great game, it's, it's one of my favorites, uh, technology can really do some great things for you. Uh, but at the end of the day, we have uh, uh, games like Dwarf Fortress, where one could argue the technology is about at, at its basic form, we're using uh, ASCII graphics, and this game is very popular. Dwarf Fortress is amazing. So once again, uh, we have something that says, well, is it technology? Well, here is examples, a example of a very, very successful and popular game uh, where the technology is about as bare bones as you can get. Story. Uh, a lot of people uh, uh, really follow a lot of the games that I've done. Uh, and here's a shot of Eternal Darkness uh, uh, for narrative and story. Uh, people who uh, like my games generally tend to gravitate towards these things. And uh, I'm a huge believer in story. Many people in the video game industry uh, believe story is not important at all. And so uh, a lot of people might think, well, Dennis is going to go in the direction of story is the most important factor. And uh, no, I, I know this not to be true. My wife proves it to me every day as she plays Candy Crush. And uh, there are many, many, many popular games that have absolutely no story. Um, and uh, so when you're thinking about what are the most important factors, these are the things to really consider. And now we'll probably go into uh, what many people will consider the answer to this question. Well, obviously, it's gameplay. Gameplay is the most important factor. Gameplay separates uh, the video game medium from other mediums because you can interact, you can have agency. Um, and uh, believe it or not, I believe this is not true. Um, uh, I'll take a game, successful games like The Walking Dead, where there were almost absolutely no gameplay. There's a few clicks here and there, uh, but for all intents and purposes, you were walking through uh, an interactive story and people really love these games. These games were very successful. So you can have a game that's incredibly good with very little gameplay. So wait a minute, what just happened? What? What, what are we talking about here? Um, well, I just went through every single factor and said, well, none of these are the most important factors. So what does this all mean? Uh, I've been thinking about this for a long time. And what one way of creating games that I'd like to present is something called engagement theory. I did this talk back in 1996 after launching uh, Blood Omen Legacy of Cain. And uh, I forwarded something called engagement theory, and it's written in a formula, ironically, because there is no formula for making games. And uh, when it comes to creating great games, um, engagement, I think, is a combination of audios, visuals, technology, uh, story, and gameplay, where they come together to create something bigger than the sum of their parts. And the real focus is on engagement. A lot of times it's very easy to say we want to have fun in a video game, but fun in a video game is extremely difficult to define. Engagement is not. As a matter of fact, uh, engagement is uh, built off of a significant psychological experiment that's been going on for quite some time uh, by uh, someone called Dr. Zigzet Mahai. And he has been studying what's called flow, which is the art of uh, finding the perfect ecstatic experience. And what that means is when you're doing something, whether you're an architect, whether you're uh, an accountant, whether you're a programmer, uh, you find that, that groove where you lose all track of time and you're completely engaged in the activity that you're doing, whether you're a pro athlete or whether you're a writer. We all know what it's like to be in that. And that is the goal when you're creating a video game is you want to engage and immerse players, whether it through story, gameplay, visuals, a combination of all of the above. 
that is what I have found throughout the uh, my tenure in the video game industry is the key aspect of what you're always trying to do. And that uh, overrides all platforms. It doesn't matter what you're creating. If you can engage and immerse your audience, you have succeeded. And the interesting thing about this is there's actually metrics for engagement and there's ways to test if you're actually hitting it. Uh, when we were creating Eternal Darkness, as an example, when we were focus testing, we continually asked people what time it was. And the more that they lost track of time, um, the more that they were engaged in the product. And we, I, as a gamer myself, I know I have these sources anecdotal, but I'm sure anyone who's a gamer here also has them. When you're playing a game, you think you've been playing it for like an hour or two and you look up and you've been playing it for six hours, it's five in the morning, you've got to go to work the next day, you're going to be a zombie, but you don't regret any of it because you just loved that moment that you were playing for those hours. That's what we want to do as game creators. And if you want to get into the video game industry, this is what you're always trying to do. So there's been a lot of talk, of, and I want to pull this back into the medium is the message. I, I think it's really important when you're thinking about creating video games to understand the medium. And I will say this, the medium has absolutely changed since I started working on games over 30 years ago to where it is now. And uh, the type of games that I am known for historically are single player games where uh, you as a player would get a story uh, that I, we would create a story, you would play in front of your PlayStation 1, it would all come at you um, and you would love that experience, that single player experience, Blood Omen Legacy of Kane, Eternal Darkness, all of these kind of things, Metal Gear Solid, um, where that was traditionally uh, the way to make games. That has all changed. Today's gaming market, 90% of all global gaming revenue is free to play multiplayer games. And uh, we are absolutely right now into the multiplayer era. And what does that mean? That means you've got huge games like Fortnite, League of Legends, uh, where people are competing in multiplayer arenas. You have had several offshoots from this, whether it be you know gaming, um, uh, streamers, and esports, where we've seen talks earlier today on those things that so they become a huge phenomenon. The multiplayer era has forever changed the way we think about things. It's changed marketing. It's changed how people are being engaged. So the medium has shifted from premium traditional games to these free to play uh, multiplayer games. Where are we going? Well, we're going to what's called, I believe, the meta player space. And the meta player space goes beyond uh, the game itself. Uh, meta player means playing the game beyond the game. Are there things that you can do to contribute uh, to that experience that's outside of the game itself? And the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, we're doing things like deep, deep uh, social media integration, where we're putting in hooks and code into streams like YouTube, Twitch, where gamers can be watching a Twitch stream and we embed code in those streams where they can actually interact with the game. So they're playing the game without even having it. And the whole idea of the meta gaming space is it allows you to really uh, get an engaging experience without even having to boot the game up, being able to contribute to the content. Uh, I could talk hours about metagaming, but it's something that we're uh, really, really big into uh, and we really love it. Um, so uh, the ways into the industry and how to get into the gaming industry, people here might be saying, why did Dennis talk about all these things? Well, I think it's really important that you have a, just a general understanding of how games work. And then if you do, uh, do any of those areas uh, that I just talked about excite you? So are you an artist? Are you a game designer? Um, if some of the questions that I was asking that you found provocative, then the answer is, yeah, you should probably check this stuff out. And you can be a game designer. You can be uh, a programmer. And um, as, as you see here, Understanding where the medium is going is really, really important. And clouds, without question now, are the new medium of video games. When I say 90% of global gaming revenue is now free to play, are right here at 86, that was an older statistic. Um, basically, that means 
you need to understand clouds when you're making your video games. And by doing that, that will really empower you uh, to be successful in the industry. Uh, capitalize on, on this. And I, a lot of people here for this conference obviously know uh, a, a little uh, thing or two about clouds. And I, uh, a I am a strong proponent of this. Um, so if you want to get into the industry, take the uh, thing that you're strongest at, whether you're an artist, a programmer, get together with some friends, make a demo. Uh, anyone who applies at Apocalypse or uh, that we consider uh, hiring that's new, uh, this is pretty much necessary uh, to see what drives you. And it, it's it, completing anything is very, very difficult. Making games is very hard. So if you can show someone you have the tenacity to create such a demo, um, uh, it it is it, it will go a long way. So the typical paths of getting into the industry are uh, testing, uh, writing, uh, audio, gameplay, visuals, technology. So whether you're a programmer, uh, whether you're an artist, whether you're a game designer, whether you do music or writing, uh, testing is the biggest path that people used to get in. It's also the hardest. You have to work your way from the ground up where if you can show some kind of real huge knack for any of the other areas, uh, that is a really good way of getting in. So um, strongly, uh, strongly, strongly uh, recommend that uh, you, take, uh, you take an approach from something that you love and you have passion from, and that passion always will come through in the things that you create. Um, a new opportunity has just emerged. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone's aware, uh, but I'm happy to say we're part of a, a foundation group with the Linux, Linux Society that launched for the first time uh, a, a, a AAA open source engine for the gaming industry. So here's something where you don't have to spend any money. You get full access to the source code. Uh, it's in the early stages right now, but uh, over the next uh, few months, uh, it will, with uh, large amounts of, of contribution from the uh, Linux society, uh, this engine will be made available for content creators. So here is something to really check out, uh, you know, to sort of put your, you know, put your foot into the water to see if it's something like that. You can, it's, uh, it's got a GitHub that's open now on uh, o3de.org, check it out. Uh, you'll see a lot of the artwork there are uh, things from Deadhouse Sonata. Deadhouse Sonata is now using the Open 3D engine and uh, the amazing Adam Renderer, uh, which is uh, pretty fantastic. So uh, definitely check this out. Um, I, I have a like an illustration video. This is just a quick render of uh, some things that we've done in the engine. This this character is 60,000 polys. Uh, this is what the enemies will look like uh, in the game. Uh, and remember, in Dead House Sonata, you're playing the undead fighting the living. So the guy behind me, the vampire, that's how you'll be playing, and you'll be fighting characters like this. So um, I'll leave it with this last uh, bit of advice. And I, I, I've learned this uh, the easy and the hard way, both at the same time. And it, and it comes down to the following. When you're going to create something and you're thinking about getting into the industry, I recommend the following. You never know in entertainment if you're going to please someone. You're going to have everyone throwing advice at you saying, oh, do this kind of game. Or you've got to get into mobile. Or you've no, no, no. You've got to get into um, racing games or fighting games. It changes all the time. And I strongly advise don't listen to any of that. Listen to one thing right here where how you feel about it because in entertainment you can never guarantee that you're going to please anyone but if you make a game you like yourself you're guaranteed to pleasing one person and that's you and that love that you have for the game will come out that soul that you put into it will come out gamers will recognize that and you are guaranteed to please at least one person and that is it